The first thing I want you to see is, uh, what this is, is like a typical set of different vehicles, right? And the different kinds of running costs associated with it. So obviously this is all fictional, but it's, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility, okay? Now, uh, this is all annual stuff. Have a look carefully at what's provided to you. How far are these cars driving in a year? 15,000 kilometers in a year. Now, being that you guys are not drivers, you probably have no sense for whether that's a realistic number or not. Is that a lot? Is that little? What do you think? It's probably average. expected that you to drive 10 or So, I thought, maybe I should give you guys some numbers, right? Um, I went in the cold <laughs> uh, out to my car, right? Can you see it? Can you see it? This is just a, a, like a couple of hours. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so, yes, it's cold, uh, but it runs just fine, okay? Now, you can see, there's the, um, that, that's not three zeros, that's ODO, which stands for, is it right? Odometer, which is tracking how many kilometers I've driven the life of the car, okay? Now, I can tell you right now, Odometer, let me write it for you, because you should, you should know what it is. Okay, you're 11. When you're ready, you're 11. By the way, there are a lot of warning lights, because I hadn't turned my car all the way on, so it always screams warning lights at you before you turn them on. The odometer says uh, 28,000 and a bit kilometers, okay? Now I've had this car for three and a half years. In that space of time, I'm very lucky, I live only a couple of suburbs over, I'm driving trade walk back and forth every day, not like I have to commute to North Sydney, okay? So think with me, think with me, 28,000, you've got a calculator there. Let's just go 28,000, three and a half years. How much am I driving every year? Not very far. Let's make that approximate. 8,000. Okay. Now, I think we can all agree that if you're doing like Castle Hill to Cherrybrook or um, Epping to Cherrybrook and that's all you're doing every day, then that's going to be a pretty small amount. There'll be most people who drive a lot further than that. Okay. And then there'll be people who their job is like regional and they're driving, you know, maybe 100,000 kilometers in the space of a couple of years very, very quickly. Okay. So they're on the other end. 15,000 kilometers, not a bad number. Okay. So we're going to go with that. We're going to do um, a small number of these questions together by interpreting this table. Okay, so walk with me. The first question we're going to have a look at is question two. Okay, so we're going to try and read this, interpret it, and see what's going on. Which vehicle has the best fuel consumption and the worst fuel consumption? Okay, so you've got the question in your head now. Let's come back to this table. Okay, so what we're doing is we are giving, we are giving model information as if all these cars drove the same distance. So which number should we be looking at? Yeah, you want to look at this, um, this row along here, right? This is the amount that each car is expending on fuel. Now, you'll notice there's um, a cell that's blank over there. What's that about? It's question one is, question one asks us to fill it in. Okay, so there are some missing things here. Now, by the way, can I just point out, you're like, oh, this is a bit, it's a bit artificial, isn't it, that I have to fill in these missing things in this table? Actually, not that artificial because this number down here, right that'll be the number that you know most easily because it's how much you're feeling it on your bank account right your credit card statement it'll tell you what all of your expenses are even if you're not keeping track of what they are okay so therefore this is not as unrealistic as it sounds in this row there's just this one over here that we want to fill in how do i do it how do i find that unknown okay so all sorry all of these numbers here they should add up to 11,633. So this number that's left should be the difference between 11,633 and all of the other expenses. So can someone calculate it for me? 2,000. I've just frozen. 2,340? Yeah. Okay, good. So now that we have all of those prices there, which one is the, let's do the best first, which is the most efficient car? The yeah, it's the one that's um, spending the least. So I'm going to put it, let's put it in green because that's a good thing. Here we go. Hooray for the Corolla. It's a small car. That's why it's more efficient because it just has to lug less weight around. Okay. So let's actually just write that in there. So this guy here, most efficient. 
okay? Um, I now want the other end of the spectrum, so which is the least efficient of all of these cars? <laughs> That's right, so Han Solo would be disappointed. Um, you can see here, the Ford Falcon here. That was pretty harsh. Um, it's the least efficient because you're spending the most money, but you're going the same amount of kilometers as the rest of them, right? So let's mark that in. Or you might like to write in your book that the Ford Falcon is least efficient, okay? Um, by the way, I'll just point out, I said, you know, the Toyota Corolla, it's going to be more efficient because it's small, it's got less weight to carry around. You also should pay attention when you guys are buying a car, to not just the size of the car, like how big is it, but pay attention to the size of the engine. Does anyone know how they measure engine sizes? Does anyone know? Yeah. Say it again. They'll measure it in capacity. Capacity, as in like 1.5 liters, for instance, which is... Um, which is the capacity of the engine of my old Toyota Corolla. That's a really, really small number. As a coincidence, it's a total coincidence. When I was growing up, um, my family drove a Ford Falcon and its engine was 3.9 liters in capacity. Because it's a number that's stuck on the back of the car and you walk past it every day. Okay. So just have a look at those. Have a look at those two numbers. Does it surprise you that that Ford Falcon is using so much petrol? Because the engine is bigger and it's burning lots of petrol all the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so obviously that's how you measure like engine size, but what three point nine liters of what? Petrol. That it can burn at any given time. So that's why you get more power out of that. And why my poor Toyota Corolla couldn't really climb hills. Okay. So So there we go. Most and uh, least efficient. Let's have a look. What else is it asking us? Here we go. Um that was question two. The next one I want us to look at is five B. So I'm skipping a few here because you can read this and you can go through all of them at your own link. What percentage of the total running costs are fuel costs for? Okay, this is really good. These percentages, this is what we're looking at in the starter questions, right? So we're looking for, let's do the Toyota RAV4 because we just looked at the Corolla, okay? So have a look, which column are we looking at for the RAV4? That's this one over on the end that we filled in, okay? So here are the petrol costs and here is the total costs, right? So how am I gonna work out the percentage of the total cost? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Let's let's all write that down. Two, three, four, zero. And I'm comparing it to the entire price. That's why I'm dividing by that number. And in order to turn that into a percentage, I'm going to multiply by 100%. It's 20 okay. point. Wait, how many decimal points? Uh, give me one decimal point. 20.1%. 20 20 That's a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. And petrol is expensive, right? Um, and we use our cars a lot. So... Whereas, whereas, for instance, if you drive very little, right, then this price is going to be a smaller percentage of the whole thing, right? Because other things like insurance and registration will be more expensive. Okay, good. So we know how to compare numbers here. Let's have a look. What else is it going to ask us? I want to just skip down to question seven because this one requires some thought. What would be the fuel cost, just the fuel cost, to drive a Ford Falcon from Sydney to Melbourne, a distance of 885 kilometers? Okay. Um, I don't know, and I hope I've demonstrated I'm really bad at guessing out numbers like these. So I'm just going to go with that number. 885. Which column are we interested in here? Which column? It's the, yeah, it's the fourth one along, right? This guy here. Okay, there's the Ford Falcon. So I want to go 885 kilometers. And I want to know how much that costs. How do I do that? What do you reckon? How how far is um how far is this cost here representing it? Fifteen thousand kilometers. Under MM one, we looked at when you compare quantities that are different, um, measuring different things, like say kilometers and dollars. What do we call those when you compare things that are different? We call that a rate. Okay, so I'm gonna write. $2,947, that's how much it costs to go, how much again? 15,000 kilometers, right? So, would someone like to suggest to me how I turn that rate into something that will give me the answer for 885 kilometers? Yeah, Jess. Yeah, very good. So this is the, this is the unitary method, right? I want to go one kilometer uh, on the right-hand side. What do I have to divide that by? <laughs> 15,000, which means, of course, you can't just divide the right-hand side, you should divide the left as well. Okay, can someone give me then 
in dollars what that's going to be? It's going to be less than a dollar. Give me a few more. Okay. Now, the reason, by the way, I've written down a few is because when I multiply by 885, that's how many kilometers I've got, right? If I introduce a little bit of rounding here, that rounding's going to get taken out of um, proportion because I'm doing it 885 times, right? Do you remember when we were looking at the um, area, the perimeter, sorry, of a polygon? The more times you use a calculation that's been rounded, the more area you introduce, right? Well, I'm going to make this error 885 times bigger than it was before. So even if it's small, it's going to matter. So you can see I've put a whole bunch of decimal places. That's per kilometer. And of course, I actually want 885 kilometers, right? So can we multiply this number by 885 and get an answer? 170... Eight. And I'll just go to the nearest cent, because I don't need to... I've, I've done all my rounding now. Now, that's not bad considering a... Um, what is this? Is this Sydney to Melbourne? Did we say Sydney yeah. to Melbourne? Sydney to Melbourne, an air... An air fare is about 100 bucks. I mean, you can get a bit lower than that if you get like a next day ticket. Uh, it goes a bit higher than that if you're in peak, but that's only one person, right? Whereas I can fit five people in that car. Might be a bit squashy, but I can do it, okay?